Our next presenter is Madison Schweitzer. She's a Burhan Civic Fellow who interned with the Highland Support Project in Quetzal Tenango, mm -hmm. right. <laughs> Guatemala. Hey, um, so hi everyone, good afternoon. Um, like you just said, my name is Madison Schweitzer. I'm a senior and I spent my summer working with Highland Support Project in Quetzaltenango. People there also call it Shayla, which is a lot easier. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's tricky. <laughs> Um, so just to start with a little bit of background about what the organization was. So Highland Support Project is actually two different organizations. First, Highland Support Project, which is based in Richmond, Virginia, um, that primarily manages the volunteer groups that go down, and then also the Asociación de Mujeres del Altiplano, which is the Association of Women of the Altiplano region. So that is an organization of indigenous women in the Highlands region in Guatemala. And the acronym AMA also means love, and so that's based out of Chela, Guatemala. Um, and through AMA, that's actually where the majority of their work is happening. And they have four different main initiatives. The first is the women's circles that they do. So the women's circles are focused primarily on women's empowerment, growing confidence, giving women basically the tools that they need to improve their lives through a lot of different things. Self-esteem and confidence is a huge one that they work on, um, but also more practical things like improving their Spanish skills, giving them the skills they need to utilize public transportation because sometimes the women have never gotten more than a few miles from their home. Um, so giving them those skills that they need to be able to improve their lives and that is very closely related also to the Clean Stove Initiative. So what the Clean Stove Initiative is, is an, an initiative to put clean stoves in the homes. Um, so what that means is it's not a stove that looks like the stove we would have in our houses um, before or after. But the original stoves that a lot of these families have um, are not clean burning. So that means they are keeping, it's either an open pit fire or a very rudimentary stove that's keeping the smoke inside the home. And so when a woman, woman is cooking over that stove, um, it can be up to the average of inhaling close to 300 cigarettes every hour. So obviously the health effect is super detrimental and it's not only the woman that's there, it's also her infant that's strapped on her back. It's the toddlers that are at her feet. It's the family that's going in and out of the home. And also even worse is that they are spending so many hours um, over that stove. We talked to a lot of women and on average, they would say that they would get up around three in the morning to start making breakfast um, for the other members of their family that would get up around seven. So they were incredibly inefficient. And because they're inefficient, they also burned a ton of firewood, which also isn't great for the deforestation in the area and costed the family more in time and money. So with the Clean Stove Initiative, um, and the clean stoves are primarily built by volunteer groups that come in, and those clean stoves um, eliminate a lot of these issues by giving women, women a lot more time in their day that they can then put towards other things. Um, and one of those other things that they can then put their time towards is selling their weavings through Pishan. Um, so Pishan is a store that's located in Shayla, um, but it also partners with a store that's actually here in Carytown um, called Alternatives. Um, and what Pishan does is allows the women to be able to sell their traditional weavings. Um, so you can see them in the pictures here. This woman in the red is wearing a traditional wipil, which is the top um, that they wear. And the woman on the far right is working on her backstrap um, loom weaving. And so the weaving that they do is a really big part of their culture. It's something that's passed through generations. It has a lot of cultural significance to the woman. Um, and it's also a very impressive, highly skilled trade that they can do. Um, so for the women that they now have an outlet to be able to sell their weavings is a really big um, game changer because one, it does empower them because it's showing them that what they put a lot of their time into is something that's really valuable. And it's something that is also has monetary and just general value to other people. Um, and for a lot of these women, if not just about all of them, this is literally the only way that they can generate income for themselves. Um, so this is huge just in their own empowerment and in the quality of life for their family. Um, and lastly, the last program is MAP, which stands for Mayan Art Program. So the little girl in the middle um, was a part of MAP. And so what MAP is, is a program through local schools um, that has a few purposes. The one is to encourage a celebration of Mayan culture. So they're going to be doing art projects that are circled um, around aspects of the Mayan culture. Like the girl that's there um, has a Nawal drawing, which is one of the symbols that they celebrate. Um, and it also, by bringing in an art component, is introducing something that they don't typically have in the schools. Um, the schools 
are not really going to have any extra programs that focus on creativity or critical thinking or the celebration of the Mayan culture. Um, so having that program also then is reaching the children in the community. So by reaching the women and the children, they're um, having a really positive impact on a lot of parts of the community. Um, so next, really quickly, I'm going to show a quick video um, that's just an interview of one of the women that received a stove just to have a little bit of a visual to what I've been talking about. Like it's always nice to have a little bit of a visual um, to what I'm talking about and also just as a side note in that video um, they were speaking mom which is one of the more common indigenous languages that they um, speak there so while I was there I was mostly doing translating um, which I at first thought oh maybe I'm translating Spanish to English but actually was listening to a translation from the indigenous language to Spanish and then to English so that was a fun challenge <laughs> of my summer <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, so from the classroom to actually being there, the two main themes um, that I had learned about before and then also saw why I was there um, are themes of poverty and then voluntourism and how those interact. Um, so when discussing poverty, I have come to agree with the definition that Highland Support Project provides for poverty, which is that it's not just a lack of resources, but a lack of opportunity to escape those current conditions. Um, before going to Guatemala, I had obviously learned a lot about um, global poverty, especially in Central America. I'm an international studies major, like I said, with a concentration in development. So I've been studying that a lot. Um, but I think it is really different when you go and you can see the people there. It sounds a little cliche, but it, nothing really compares to meeting people and to going into someone's home and seeing that firsthand. So I'm really grateful that I had the opportunity to actually see something that I've been reading about for so long um, for myself because I think you have a new appreciation now whenever I'm in class and I go to read something that mentions global poverty, I have this distinct visual, um, which I think is really different um, and really cool going forward that I feel like I have that perspective now. Um, but another big topic that I'd studied before going and then was faced with while I was there is the topic of voluntourism. Um, so voluntourism, broadly defined, is when a group of volunteers from the United States travels to foreign countries to do short-term volunteer work. Um, this type of work, along with its effective effectiveness, can really vary greatly. Um, many scholars critique that if these like whether or not these projects are really bringing long-term benefit um, or if they're simply replacing work that could be done by locals. Um, additionally, there's a really wide range of critiques from if this is a colonialist type of project um, and what the implication is of American groups just kind of swooping in to bring aid to foreigners um, with an attitude maybe of superiority or just to place themselves on their own personal moral high ground. Um, but I think through additional academic research combined with what I saw there, I would argue um, that when it's done well, voluntourism work can actually be, um, an if be a way to bring successful change. Um, so to bring that successful change, I think it needs to check a few really big boxes, um, and I define those as avoiding dependency, creating long-lasting relationships with local people, not replacing their jobs, and fostering an environment that promotes meaningful exchanges of culture. Um, so avoiding dependency is the first one, probably the biggest one, and by that, I just mean not going and giving, but working together with. So not going and giving handouts, even if I think volunteers often go and it's 
tempting to be like, I have this and I can so easily give it to you, but it's not going to bring that long-term change that they're looking for. Um, and so I think one of the biggest ways that they do that ties into my second point by creating long-lasting relationships with the local people and not replacing jobs. Um, so AMA, the branch that's there, is run completely by Guatemalan people and of those Guatemalan people, primarily indigenous women. Um, and those people that work for AMA work there year round. It's their full-time job and they have that job through this organization. It's not like it's just foreigners going in and saying this is how things should go because these local people, of course, are the ones that know what they need. They know how they're gonna do things best. Um, that was a picture of me with, the, with my kind of team um, from the summer. So for a lot of the time, I was the only American there just as the intern, which again, for me, was an experience I'm really grateful to have. Um, and then lastly, fostering an environment that promotes meaningful exchanges of culture. Um, I also argue something that's beneficial um, through volunteerism trips like this is getting to see a new culture um, on both ends. So for a lot of the volunteers, like myself included, it was their first time spending an extended period of time in a place that was so different from where they were from. Um, and I think that's something that's really meaningful, especially when you do it in a respectful way. Um, and I feel like the volunteers were never treated as if, oh, you're coming in and giving and get like you were really portrayed as equals to the local people from the beginning. Um, and through translation services, they were able to you know communicate with the women that they were in. We had meals together with them. Whoops. Um, the women in the picture there and the one in the middle were some tamalitos um, that the women had made for us on the last day. So we were sharing meals with the local people. We were conversing with them. We were learning um, about them and spending time with their families um, throughout the weeks, which I think is something that's really beneficial for anyone to get to spend time in a place um, that's really different um, from where you are originally from. Um, so just kind of at the end, what I'm left with um, are still a lot of questions I I um, think I had a really positive experience where I learned a lot and I saw a ton of benefit um, from the work that was going on, but that doesn't mean that it's perfect and that doesn't mean there aren't other things that I um, don't know about it. Um, I think one of the biggest things would be the scale and the impact of the scale of this from what I saw was on a very localized level. We were spending time in very small communities and I saw that the effect was huge within those small communities, but one of the big questions I'm left wondering um, is, I mean, on one end, how far can this impact go? And then also, what is the ripple effect of the, com of the impact that they're having on these small communities now? Like what impact is this having that they realize or don't realize on a regional scale, on a national scale, on a governmental level? Um, not just this organization, but other organizations that are doing small community work like it. And then the other question um, that I'm left with is just the longevity of projects like this. Um, I mean, I obviously, they've been doing this work for over 20 years. It's been really effective so far, um, but also just through volunteer work, should that be the indefinite answer? Should there be a time where it's more transitioned over the local people than it is now? These are things that I don't necessarily have the answer to, um, but just I'm left wondering at the end. Um, so just to wrap up, um, the sheep I saw, I saw a lot of sheep while I was there. Um, lots of animals, really. I'm a vegetarian after this trip, um, but <laughs> truly, but um, anyway, I just want to say thank you to anyone that helped um, with this trip. Um, I know when I was applying to go, there were a lot of kind of hurdles and doubts of the safety and the logistics of that. Um, but I feel really grateful that I was able to get this funding um, to go because without the funding, this isn't something that would have been feasible. And also the way that I found out about this internship um, is because I went to a speaker event on campus. Um, the organization was actually started by a Richmond alum, Ben Blevins, who came to speak. Um, so I feel really grateful that Richmond brings speakers like that. I got to go and then I got to get paid to go. So really, I um, just feel very grateful um, for all of the resources that are available here that'll enable great experiences like this. Um, I'm graduate in the spring, and my plans right now are to go back. Um, so I'm really excited about that. So thank you. Thank you.